Hey everyone. So I'm going to show you how to integrate ammo.js into your 3.js projects, giving you access to some nice physics in the process. You can see from 3.js's example site that they do sort of support physics. They've got a bunch of demos here showing you that it is possible to integrate physics into projects, but once you get into the source code, it's not quite as simple as just enabling it. We'll be focusing on ammo.js in particular, but you do have options for JavaScript physics engines. There's a whole bunch of very capable ones available. So ammo.js is really just a JavaScript wrapper around another older and very well-known physics engine, the bullet physics engine. It's actually compiled from C++ into JavaScript, which in itself is pretty neat. And the general approach for using it in your projects goes like this. You've got your game world. Those are all your objects, the characters, everything, that kind of stuff. You could sort of imagine it as the true world. You've got your 3D world, and that's kind of a separate thing. Keep it in sync to the real world by updating it with the positions of things. And now you've got this new world, your physics world. And again, it's some sort of mirrored version of your game world. But instead of having 3D objects, you have physics objects. And you'll use that to simulate where things go and then sync your 3D world to it. If this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry. We'll do some code. Code always makes things clear. So in code, the first thing that we have to actually do is include ammo.js. In my case, I just shoved a reference to it in the index.html file. If you're wondering why there's a WASM version and a non-WASM version, one is the WebAssembly compiled version, and that will almost certainly outperform the other one. The next step is that you have to initialize ammo.js. So down here, before I do anything important, I call ammo and supply this callback. Once it's ready to go, we can go ahead and instantiate our world and start doing actual physics. Now, I'm mostly using the same code I did from the tutorial on creating a basic 3D world. I'd like to focus just on the physics part today, so I'm not going to explain all of that line by line. Just watch that first tutorial if none of this makes sense. Here at the top of our initialize function, we've got a bunch of these funky ammo calls. What you're essentially doing is instantiating your physics world and choosing which solvers or broad phase algorithms to use. There's a whole bunch of options for these. There's this 3.js example that shows off soft body support in Bullet. So if you want to have something like that in your world, you need to enable soft body support, which means using the BT soft rigid dynamics world and BT default soft body solver. Yeah, I get it. Not super clear. You can read through the docs to see what other options there are, but for now, we're just going to accept the basic default values and move on with our lives. Lastly, we need to actually update the physics world every frame. So in here, in the raft call, we can just call physicsworld.stepsimulation and pass the time elapsed since the last frame. When you run this, well, nothing happens, because we haven't actually done anything yet. All we've done is initialize the physics engine, but we haven't actually placed anything into the world. So let's go do that now. We need to make what are called rigid bodies. So let's just go ahead and make a class called rigid body. And what we're going to end up doing is creating a function. We're calling it create box because it creates boxes. No surprises there. And it'll have a bunch of parameters like mass, position, rotation, size, that kind of stuff. First thing that we need to do is set up the transform. And the transform is exactly like the name implies. It's the initial transform of the rigid body. We set the position and the rotation with these two calls to set origin and set rotation. Now motion state. The way that I understand this is that this is basically a way for you to synchronize the physics world and whatever else you want. In our case, graphics. It kind of acts like an interface to get back the rigid body's transform when you need it. So what we'll be doing later is using the motion state to update our 3D mesh transforms. So here, we create the shape. And this is interesting because there's a bunch of predefined shapes in ammo.js. Things like cubes, spheres, cylinders, that sort of thing. In this case, we're creating a box shape and defining the size of the box using the size parameter. But you could make this a sphere or whatever else bullet physics supports, including a full mesh. Like, we're not specifically limited to these basic shapes, but in general, the more basic the shape, the better the performance. So keep that in mind. Finally, we create the rigid body using these couple lines. Specifically, you've got this line here, the BT rigid body construction info. 
That sort of acts like a helper to provide info to create the actual rigid body on the next line. One important thing to note here is that we pass the mass into BT rigid body construction info. And as you can see from the docs, setting a mass of zero creates a fixed, or in other words, a non-dynamic rigid body. So basically, if you want to create things that stay in the same spot no matter what, like let's say the ground, set the mass to zero. Now if we go and create a box in code, let's create both the 3D mesh representing the box and the physics rigid body. We'll also create a ground box, and remember to set the mass to zero here. That makes it static and totally unmovable. And then, if you run this, well, you've got a box floating in midair. A little anticlimactic if you were expecting it to fall down, but not at all unexpected. Let me show you what we did wrong here. Remember how I said that we need the motion state to keep the physics and the graphics in sync? Right, that's because that's not something that just happens automatically. It's code, not magic. We need to do this ourselves. So what we can do is create a list of rigid bodies. When we create the 3D mesh in the ammo.js rigid body, we'll group them together and shove them into the rigid bodies list. Then down below in that step function, we need to do the actual work of syncing them ourselves. So here what I'm doing is looping over every rigid body in our list, which is realistically just one box, and I'm using the motion state to access the transform. From the transform, we can get the origin and rotation, create 3.js vectors out of those, and copy them into the mesh's position and rotation. Now when you do that, voila! You've got a box and it falls from the sky onto the ground. So yay, we're making progress. Diving back into the code here, what I'm doing here is looping and creating a whole bunch of objects. But this time, instead of just creating boxes, we're going to create boxes and spheres. Crazy fancy. That means that I have to create this new function, create sphere, which is in reality mostly a copy paste of the other create box function with one extremely minor difference. See this line here, the BT sphere shape? That's pretty much the difference. Instead of creating a box, we create a sphere. If I wanted to clean this up a bit better, we'd refactor this to be a more general function, but whatever, this is a tutorial. Now we've got a whole bunch of boxes and spheres falling. Pretty neat. And that about wraps up getting the basics working. This is kind of just scratching the surface of what's possible with ammo.js, but should be enough for you to get the ball rolling at least. Pun intended. Code's up on GitHub, probably, if I remembered, so take a look. Until next time, cheers.